Good morning, everybody. Thanks very much for coming out today. Big turnout. Um, we're here today to uh, provide what's going to be uh, quite a comprehensive update about hate crime and protest trends through 2023. Um, we are likely to be here a little bit longer than normal because there's a lot of information that uh, we're going to provide. Uh, we have three uh, speakers here today. Uh, first being Staff Sergeant Astrid Bonter, representing the Vancouver Police Department's Diversity, Community and Indigenous Relations section. Followed by Staff Sergeant Bonter, we will have Inspector Jeff Newman, N-E-U-M-A-N, representing the Vancouver Police Department's Emergency Operations and Planning section. And we also have Inspector Mike Rowe, R-O-W-E, representing the VPD's major crime section. Um, following uh, um, remarks from um, Staff Sergeant Bonter and Inspector Newman, uh, we'll take questions, I'll moderate the questions, we'll do our best to answer all of those questions, and if you have anything that's unrelated to the main topic today, uh, we'll address those uh, afterwards. Thank you. Good morning, thank you for having me. Um, this morning in collaboration with Inspector Newman, I will focus on three areas of interest. Hate trends affecting our communities at large, hate motivated incidents that have risen out of the war in the Middle East, and finally, what steps we have taken as a department to proactively address public safety concerns in our communities. This Sunday marked 100 days since Hamas's attack on Israel, October 7th, 2023. A moment in history that will not be forgotten by many communities directly and indirectly impacted by the violence of that day and the ensuing war in the Middle East. While I cannot begin to speak on behalf of the communities embroiled in this conflict, I can say that without question their suffering is seen and heard. To begin in 2023, the Vancouver Police Department received and thoroughly investigated 265 reports of hate-motivated incidents. These are incidents that target a person based on their race, national or ethnic origin, language, color, religion, sex, age, mental or physical disability, sexual orientation, or gender identity or expression. The number 265 marks an overall increase of 31% from 2022, with increased incidents of hate noted in our 2S LGBTQ plus community, the South Asian community, and the Jewish community. These increases are driven by a number of international and global factors, including public discourse arising around the Khalistan movement, the summer eruption of protests and rallies related to sexual orientation and gender identity, and of course, the war in the Middle East, which I will address in more detail shortly. These increases highlight hate and unrest between people. But if there is a silver lining to be drawn from these reports of hate, increases in reporting mark grand scale attitude shifts that have declared once acceptable behavior to be wrong and intolerable. When a member of the public calls police because they have been a victim of a hateful act or because they have observed a hateful act, they are doing the right thing. More people calling out hate, more people seeing hate for what it is, leads to an increase in our reporting numbers. I will take a moment to draw us back to the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. During this time, we saw a marked increase in hate directed at our East Asian communities. In 2020, we captured 98 hate-motivated incidents. In, two, in 2023, this number was increased, decreased to 46. We see reports coming in, hate being identified, and we see overall numbers of hate-motivated incidents against the East Asian community declining. While this trend is good, I acknowledge that even one incident is one incident too many. To speak specifically to the war in the Middle East and how this conflict has spilt over in our city, I spoke about a 62% increase in hate-motivated incidents impacting the Jewish community. This amounts to 47 reported hate-motivated incidents in 2023 versus 29 in 2022, and most notably, 33 hate-motivated incidents impacting the Jewish community since October 7th. That's 70% of the annual total. In respects to incidents related to the war in the Middle East as a whole, the VPD has documented 50 separate incidents. These include incidents on all sides of the conflict. Charges have been recommended in 17 separate incidents. 
Some of the investigations have resulted in charges, and these are and they are they are as follows. Two women walking away from a pro-Israel rally on October 9th were accosted by teenage boys who threatened to rape and slice their faces. Our officers immediately arrested the suspects, gathered additional evidence, and recommended criminal charges to Crown Counsel. A 19-year-old and a 15-year-old have now been charged with uttering threats and assault, and as part of their bail conditions, they are not allowed to step foot in the city of Vancouver. In the days following the October 7 attacks on Israel, a man repeatedly returned to a Jewish school and made anti-Semitic comments and gestures, including a Heil Hitler salute toward many people, including a rabbi. Because we had proactively positioned police officers near Jewish schools and community centers following the attacks, we were able to quickly identify and arrest the suspect, who has now been charged with criminal harassment. His bail conditions now pro prohibit him from going anywhere near that school. An 87-year-old man was headbutted and injured on Commercial Drive by a man waving a Palestinian flag in early November. The victim, a man of Jewish descent, had taken issue when he saw the accused waving the flag and yelling free Palestine. They exchanged words, prompting the suspect to come across the street and assault the senior. The, sus the suspect was arrested by the Vancouver police and was now been charged with assault. Each one of these events deeply impact a person's sense of belonging and safety in their community. I have only spoken about charge files. We have also investigated incidents impacting the Muslim and West Asian communities. These events include incidents of graffiti and hateful commentary written across the wall of a community, community center saying all Muslims should die. Graffiti on public washroom doors saying I'm going to burn every Palestinian alive. Graffiti on the interior walls of our schools where children are meant to feel safe. Human excrement rubbed on a vehicle bumper bearing a free Palestine sticker. Whether it be a hateful gesture, anti-Islamic or anti-Muslim commentary, a swastika written on a sidewalk, window, or wall, an assault, a threat, or an act of intimidation, this behavior cannot be normalized and will not be tolerated in this city. Cases are solved when someone calls police to report a crime. And I want to take this opportunity to tell people that we want to hear from you. You can contact us through non-emergency, through 911, and through online reporting mechanisms that are featured on our VPD diversity webpage, which is translated into 13 different languages. If you have been targeted due to your race, religion, national or ethnic background, gender identity, sex, sex or sexual orientation, we want to hear from you. As we have since the onset of the war in the Middle East, we will continue to work closely with law enforcement and counterterrorism partners, both here in Canada and internationally. Before turning it over to Inspector Newman, I will highlight some of the actions that we have taken to meet the needs of our di diverse communities here in Vancouver. Within hours of October 7 attacks on Israel, we began reaching out to our leaders from multiple faiths to address urgent safety concerns. We activated our Departmental Operations Center, which serves as a 24-7 command and control center during major incidents and events. This allowed us to move resources urgently and as needed to various, lo various locations within our city. We assigned dedicated police resources to maintain an over-presence at certain locations around the city, including places of worship, public and private schools and community centers. We deployed school liaison officers to public and faith-based schools to keep our children and teachers safe. In addition to conflict-specific responses to hate and public safety concerns, we continue to engage in significant outreach with community groups and faith groups, including members of our Jewish and Muslim communities and others who have felt the impacts of the events in the Middle East. As in other cities, one of the biggest challenges we continue to face as a result of the Israel-Hamas war is the number and frequency of protests, as well as the unprecedented volatility connected to some of these protests. I will now defer to Inspector Newman to provide an update on this front, and then we will move to questions. Hello, Inspector Jeff Newman of the Emergency Operations and Planning Section. I am here to give uh, the public an update on the protest activity in the City of Vancouver. So typically in the city of Vancouver, we used to see pre-pandemic and in 2020, approximately 600 protests a year. In 2021 and 2022, that increased to 800 protests per year, 
Last year in 2023 was a record-breaking year with over 1,000, 1,018 protests last year. What that contributed to was a significant impact on the operational budget of the Vancouver Police Department, resulting in $4 million in overtime costs for our policing members. It also resulted due to the complexity of the protest actions, an increase of 27% of our deployments of our officers to these events. One other uh, events or special events that also increased in 2023 as we exited the uh, pandemic was our special event planning. So the emergency operations and planning section oversees the planning of uh, last year in 2023, 1,700 events. Combined with the 1,000 protests, that was 2,700 events that our department had to manage in pre-planning, in the implementation of any plans, as well as any follow-up care afterwards. Leading up to the Israel-Hamas war. October 7th, after the terrorist attack on Israel, since that date, there have been 80 special events that we have deployed officers to, resulting in 1,800 shifts in providing special attention to all communities to ensure public safety for the citizens of Vancouver. These events have often drawn large groups of people with opposing views and created significant volatility to the motions involved. In order to ensure public safety, we have front-loaded our members out to those events to make sure that our members are there under a strong command structure to prevent any incidents of violence. We have spent over $2.5 million to date covering off uh, these events, these 80 events, for the Israel-Hamas war. In addition to the overtime, there's also considerable regular duty and over department resources that have been tasked uh, and committed to our resourcing the Vancouver Police Department. Staff Sergeant Bonter has spoke to those, but that would be our school liaison unit. Our operations division has been fully committed with our patrol division, our metro teams, our investigative division for after action uh, incidents and following up any major incidents of violence or crime committed during these protests or these events. We have also stayed engaged with our local partners, whether they're city partners, our other uh, fellow agencies outside of the city of Vancouver, We've stayed in weekly contact provincially as well as, uh, as well as nationally and staying in touch with our national partners to ensure consistency of action, but also to stay ahead of any protest actions that might occur in the city of Vancouver. What have we been doing to balance the public safety for protests? One thing we have been doing is we support everyone's right underneath the charter, their right to lawfully protest. The caution there is lawfully. So we will support everybody's right to protest, but it must be done lawfully. We encourage everyone who does protest to do it peacefully, to respectfully in accordance with the law. And anyone who breaks that law, they may put themselves or others at risk for face criminal uh, charges and or arrest. These protests and these events are managed by an experienced group of commanders to ensure that there is a reasonable and proportionate police response to any criminal activity. But one thing we will iterate is that the blockage of critical infrastructure is a significant public safety risk and that will, is not acceptable in the city of Vancouver. It affects our first responders' responses uh, while they're on duty. It also affects our first responders who are responding to shifts, whether it's to hospital shifts, Vancouver Fire Service Rescue, or BC Ambulance. That concludes this. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, uh, Inspector and Staff Sergeant. Uh, a lot of information there. Um, we'll I'll, I will facilitate a question and answer now. Um, let's make sure everybody has an opportunity to ask a, one initial question before we start going through uh, with follow-ups, if you don't mind. And as you ask the question, I'll defer to the most appropriate person. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, I just wanted to clarify, um, just regarding the protests, have you made arrests at the protests that are related to hate crime? I'll defer that one to uh, um, Inspector Newman. This might actually be best deferred to Inspector Rowe, but I can say that there has been arrests made at protests related to hate crime. I believe we're up to 13 people, is that correct? For charged people, for charges offenses related to protests. One of those was the one that Staff Sergeant Bonter spoke to, and that was related to uh, teenagers who threatened to rape uh, a young female. 
and they subsequently, uh, prior to that incident, committed an assault on another bystander. We have followed up with that, and they're also charged with the assault incident. Good. I, I'm just curious on, on October 7th, who, who, somebody who's watching the news, just can you walk me through that pro uh, uh, process when, when this terrorist attack, at what point, who, who says within the VPD, oh my gosh, we have to do something, and, and, and what happens, how does that process get going? Well, I, I mean, I can, I can uh, perhaps speak to that off the bat, and I can um, tell you that on the morning of October 7th, a lot of us found out about uh, the horrible uh, events that had occurred, um, the attacks by Hamas against Israel, um, um, the way uh, much of the world did um, through the news. Um, we immediately engaged with other public safety partners locally, regionally, nationally, and internationally, including counter-terrorism partners, to uh, assess um, and mitigate any uh, risks that um, could be uh, present here in, uh, locally in Vancouver. Uh, we began immediately outreaching to community leaders, uh, faith leaders. Uh, we began hearing from members of our community who expressed uh, deep and grave concerns about their, uh, their personal safety. Um, we um, heard from our own community members here who were deeply concerned um, about w the events that they were seeing um, unfold overseas um, in Israel. Um, people who uh, may have family uh, in that region or friends in that region um, and had concerns about their own safety and how um, uh, um, the events from overseas could um, reverberate here in, uh, in Vancouver. So uh, we initiated a plan um, which immediately involved um, deploying officers to various locations throughout the community. Uh, locations we considered to be high risk, community centers, places of worship, schools, um, and other locations where um, we believe there were, we were hearing from community members and we believe based on our own for information that there could be risks. Uh, we activated our departmental operations center um, and we can and continue to engage and we have continued to engage with the community uh, throughout the past 100 days um, to um, continuously assess, um, to respond to community needs, to meet the community's needs, to reassure the community and to make sure that everybody um, um, can remain as safe as we can uh, keep them um, and can feel safe uh, at a time that's very, uh, very much uncertain. Um, in a time when there's uh, a tremendous amount of anxiety um, throughout our community. When was the last time the VPD felt the need to be so proactive? Uh, I, I, Russia invading Ukraine. I mean, what, what set the alarm bells off in this case? When, when was something of, of like... We, um, while the events that unfolded on October 7th and the events that have unfolded um, in Israel, in Gaza, and in the Middle East since October 7th um, um, have caused a significant amount of concern and prompted a, a, a significant response from the Vancouver Police Department in terms of um, responding to community needs and ensuring people remain safe. I can tell you that we engage in uh, similar outreach to the community and similar responses um, on a variety of levels. As you would have seen uh, through uh, the, um, the, uh, the Khalistan, uh, ge various geopolitical events, whether, wh events, whether it be Khalistan, uh, issues in Iran, with the, the various marches that we saw um, and demonstrations that we saw uh, throughout the city during the summer. Looking back to COVID when we had reg <coughs> excuse me, um, regular rallies, marches, demonstrations, um, this is work that we all that we're doing consistently throughout the community on a, on a variety of causes. This one, just because of the uh, emotions, uh, the very intense emotions that people are feeling, um, the uh, very intense concerns that people have for their own personal safety, um, the needs from the community um, that uh, we are uh, working to continuously meet. Um, and the incidents of rising anti-Semitism that we've seen, as well as other hate incidents that we've seen uh, since October 7th have, have prompted a very significant uh, response from us and we'll continue to work with the community to make sure that we've met the community's needs and that we're doing everything that we can within our power to keep the, uh, the community safe. Rumina. So do you have, um, I mean, I know that the 
have a certain amount of money roughly that you look at that you budget for for pro protests and are we over that is it, i mean it sounds like you're dealing you're dealing with millions of dollars based on what you said are you looking for additional funds the war continues do you need support from the city on top of what your budget already allows for for this i'll pass that over to inspector The VPD budget for protests was approximately $1 million in 2022. Based on the amount of environmental protests we saw with the highway blockades, as an organization, we increased the budget to $2 million for 2023. Uh, we've quickly surpassed that with the unanticipated war of Israel and Hamas. Going forward into 2024, it'll be hard to project as to what geopolitical events may result in further protests in the city of Vancouver. Our job will just be to ensure public safety and to deploy officers to where we need to do that in order to ensure that those protests are done lawfully uh, and the citizens of Vancouver feel safe as they traverse through the city. At this point, are you asking the city for additional money based on what you anticipate? At this point, we're not asking the city for any additional funds at this time. We're, uh, we're relooking at 2023 for what we incurred for the $4 million as well as the two and a half million dollars that were incurred recently after the Israel Hamas war has had been initiated. So where does that money get pulled from in your in your budget if, if these are it's unanticipated, this war happened, it continues. So what where is the money getting pulled from? The money will uh, eventually get pulled from our larger general budget that our executive will have to uh, approach the city and uh, the city manager and they'll have to try to resolve where they can to find the future funding if this continues at this pace that it has in the last sort of 90 days or 2024. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, just looking at uh, the press release, some of the key metrics and uh, anti-Semitism incidents are highlighted. Uh, I'm just wondering if there's um, any information about uh, Islamophobia or anti-Muslim incidents, because that doesn't seem to be I guess in the press release, I know, I know there was some incidents highlighted during the overall conference, but is there any data, uh, and if not, why might that be missing? Master, do you want to speak about the data related to, specifically related to, related to the Muslim community? Yeah, I won't get into the specific numbers, but we have absolutely seen an increase in hate-motivated incidents against our Muslim communities as well as our West Asian communities. Um, those increases, the raw data numbers, are not as high as we have seen in the Jewish community, but those events have absolutely happened, and I did talk about the graffiti incidents as well that have impacted the Muslim community. What I would say about those numbers, we're reporting on incidents that are being brought to our attention. And and why we're here today is to encourage the public from all walks of life, from all different communities, to come to us and bring us their concerns that relate to hate. Um, it, absolutely, there may be incidents of underreporting in all communities, in the Muslim community and the West Asian community. So if that's the case, this is our appeal to those groups that if they feel they have been targeted um, as a result of, of their membership to a particular group, they need to come to us and let us know. We are here to address their concerns and make sure that they feel safe in their community. That's our objective as a department. And then, so just to be clear, the reason those numbers were included was, was because they're not as high as what's been reported in terms of the Jewish community, that, that's correct. That's not to say that those incidents haven't happened, they're just not as high. So that affects where we're placing resources. Um, however, we absolutely have an ear to all communities. We have sat with community leaders, we have come into their faith, uh, their faith communities as well as their churches, their mosques, their synagogues, and listened to their concerns, and we will continue to do that. It's sort of a similar question, but relates to the specific stat on 50 criminal offenses uh, since the breakout of this war or since the, uh, the initial attack. Uh, of those 50 offenses, do we have a breakdown of who the targets were? Were they anti-Semitic or were they Islamophobic or, uh, or what have you? Inspector, do, is that an ad, a question that we have an answer to here or is that something you want to follow up on? I can follow. If you, can you send me an email about that? Yeah, Personally, send me an email, and um, I'll work on getting um, an answer for you. Yeah, I just don't. We just don't have that. Um, and I appreciate you don't have that, maybe a specific stat, but we're talking about the Islamophobic component. Is there even a, a rough percentage of? You know, we're talking about a major uptick in anti-Semitism mm -hmm. here, and I appreciate perhaps reports haven't come in about Islamophobia, but. It, I, I think the public might be a bit confused because we've heard from the Human Rights Commissioner, we've heard from the Premier, 
Uh, some of these figures are almost mentioning the anti-Semitism and the Islamophobia in you know, one sentence after another as if they are on equivalent uh, levels, but the, the police stats don't really um, don't line up with that, at least based on, on this report. Okay. Sorry, what was your question? I'm just trying to get a, a sense of the statistics here or the, even the, the percentage base, even if you don't have the exact figure right now. I can work on getting you um, the precise number of hate uh, motivated incidents that have been reported um, from um, the Muslim community. If the, is it, would that answer your question? Sure. Thanks. Okay. Do we have an answer? Do we have I that can, answer, Esther? I can, I can sure. provide some general detail sure. that might That'd be, be great, of yeah. some assistance. So, um, numbers-wise, we have uh, 50 total events that have risen out of the relate to the conflict. Um, 33 of those have been identified as be as having a hate component for the Jewish community, and then those remaining of those remaining 17, approximately 10 of which relate to our uh, West Asian Muslim community, and then another handful of events that may have happened at different rallies or protests that have been, for an example, um, an assault on a police officer or a conflict between between two people on on both sides of the conflict, but occurring within within the process itself and not hate related. Um, I think it's really important to acknowledge the fact that there may be underreporting. This is absolutely not to say that the events aren't happening. There may be underreporting, and part of this here, why we're here today, is to break down those barriers, to invite those communities um, who, who may historically have not had a positive relationship with police to come to us. We are here to listen um, and not discriminate about, discriminate about who's coming to us with their complaints. Thank you. Go ahead. Are you able to share the Jewish school that was targeted and what happened? No, um, I'm sorry, we're not going to. Simply for the uh, safety um, and privacy of the people who were targeted, it's not information that we're going to share at this time. Thank you for understanding. Are there any other questions in the room? We can go around again if anybody has a follow up. Mike? Yeah, uh, just when you look back at the pandemic and the number of hate motivated incidents investigated by the BPD. Have you been tracking the number of charges that have actually led to prosecution? Just to get an idea. Um, are you, are you uh, referring strictly from um, incidents during the pandemic, Mike? From pandemic to date. I can, I can speak to that. Again, I, I can't, I don't have the numbers on me. We can get back to you with an email, but we absolutely do track all of the hate motivated incidents that rise to, to a charge standard. And in fact, when something is identified to be motivated by hate, bias, or prejudice, we are looking at those files, our hate crimes investigators are looking at those files and deciding whether or not a 718.2 application should be recommended to Crown Council. And that would basically be uh, consideration for uh, an aggravated aggravation as a result of the hate motivation. So a consideration for additional sentencing as a result of the hate component. Do you have any numbers about successful prosecutions related to hate crimes? I don't have those numbers available right now, but we can certainly provide those through email. And Mike, that might be um, um, also uh, a question that you might want to connect with the BC Prosecution Service on, um, which might be able to provide a, um, uh, a broader um, ex explanation province-wide. We can only speak to Vancouver, and certainly once uh, um, a case is, is uh, forwarded from us, we collect evidence, as you know, make recommendations to Crown Council. It's the uh, independent um, authority of the uh, BC Prosecution Service, Crown Council, to lay charges and to see those cases through the courts. Um, so if you're, uh, it may be another avenue for you to, to seek that from the uh, BC Prosecution Service. Uh, Steve, can I ask some questions on unrelated things? Uh, let's make sure we're done here on hate crimes and protests, please. And on then I will answer your other questions. Um, Astrid, is that something that we have, uh, we're able to speak to? I, uh, we can say that we've, uh, we've got um, a decrease in, uh, particularly involving uh, members of the East Asian and uh, Southeast Asian community that were uh, largely targeted during the pandemic, and we've seen uh, numbers start to go down. But I'll, I'll defer to Staff Sergeant Bont or to uh, elaborate that uh, a, a little bit on that. 
I just go back to some of the comments that I made uh, earlier. We, in the, at, during the height of the pandemic in 2020, we entertained 98 incidents of uh, hate-motivated uh, incidents against the East Asian community. And now looking in this year, 2023, we have seen a significant de decline. Uh, we're looking at, a, I believe it to be 46 uh, hate-motivated inc incidents against this specific community. Any other questions on this topic? 